Hello, Legends of the Internet! Starfish5 Legend here, and welcome back to the great, the magnificent city of Shin Murai. Hope you all are having a wonderful day, night, time zone, whatever it is for you. Thanks for tuning in. Today we have some fun things planned, including a building of a very nice, big skyscraper right behind me there. It's gonna look a little something like a so, but not quite like a so, but kind of like a so. And we're gonna be building it right over here. Wait, before we go any further, you might be very confused as to what is going on. If you are, Check that I card right there. There's a video on the explanation of Shin Mirai and the story therein. So go watch that if you have it. If you have, then that's amazing. Thank you very much. Let's continue the video. Now this building isn't just going to be for shows, even though it will look fantastic. We're gonna be putting a nice mob form inside the interiors, because you see all these uh, torches, torch, 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 all the torches everywhere. This city, if you haven't noticed, is very spawn-proof. Not a whole lot of mobs wandering around. You see any mobs over here, over there? Nope, I didn't think so. And so we're gonna be making use of that mechanic and the spawn-proofing we've already done to make a beautiful but functional mob farm here in the Takai district of Shin Murai. We're talking skeletons, zombies, creepers, spiders, all the goodies, Falling down, splatting their feet on the ground, dropping their goods. Like string and bones and gunpowder and most importantly, rotten flesh. Wait. No, 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 not that one. That one's kind of useless. But all the other ones are very useful. And so I think without further ado, let's get working on the exterior of this mob farm here so we can then work on the redstone bits in the center. Let's go! Just like that, we have a brand new building in the city, and it is quite good. If I do say so myself, I'm very happy with how it's turning out so far. I'm definitely not done with it, though, that's for sure. I knew it had to be some sort of boxish style of a build to get the right footprint for the mob farm within, but I wanted to change up the shape and make it very interesting to look at. Very futuristic, if you will. And so that's why we have all these fancy, fancy kind of edges and whatnot to really break up that regular old square shape. And as you can see on the inside, it is very, very dark thanks to the wonderful tinted glass. We only have one torch right here that is keeping mobs from spawning because we're not quite ready for them yet as it is very, very much just a big uh, empty interior here. But before we get on into that interior and all its juicy bits, we're going to actually add a little more details to some of the building here. For example, signs running up the side here, just to break up more of that plain texture and add even more fancy detail. I also have some fancy banners we're going to throw in too. And... And with the magic of editing, we have signs, and they're very, very pretty. I would make them glow ink, or at least some of them, but we already have a lot of glow ink signs in this base so far, and they are quite laggy, unfortunately. And so we're just going to keep with the regular ones. There's already lots of details on this build that I don't think it really needs it, and so we're not going to do it. And looks like we actually do have our first zombie spawning inside the tower there. Thought it was bomb proof. 
guess it's not quite yet. We're now up in the storage system here. We're working on a little bit of banners, and I think a really kind of cool pattern is this nice, simple brick pattern that has the lime against the black there. It is very nice and poppy, if you will. So we're going to make up a, a bunch of these. Then if you can see here, we have a bit of a gradient going on from the gray stuff down here up to the magenta up there. I would like to also add banners going all the way up there as well. And I think if we do something like this, then this, some of that, and then finally some of this, we get these nice little text patterns on the banners there. Then if we top it off with a little bit of a border, that looks mighty fun. Let's make up the other ones. Boop, boop, pop, boop, bam, nice. Beep, boop, pop, wazam, kajow. And just like that, we have all three. Let's go hang them up. And would you look at that? Banners have been placed in. And ooh, does it look so fancy? The contrast of that lime against the darker tones. Oh, it is very vergesy. Vergesy indeed. I love the gradient I have going here with those fancy banners as well. It all just comes in so, so nicely, so futuristic. Looks like little screens displaying all manner of advertisements and whatnot. But now with the exterior done, let's uh, dive a little bit into the interior here and figure out just exactly how we're gonna get all this loot from these mobs. So what I'm thinking is first we need to tear out this ground before we do that, Using the fancy Lightmatica mod, we can see a little bit of a schematic that I've already kind of put together here. We're just using some simple stone floors that go up throughout the entire tower here, where mobs can then spawn. And we're using some simple scaffolding stone here that will send a signal all the way up through these, causing these dispensers that will have a water bucket in him to be a uh, splooshing everywhere, splashing all those mobs right off the edges. Fences here to kind of keep that water back from falling all the way down, but then pushing the mobs off. But if we have a look underneath, we might need to uh, remove some of this terrain here to make some more room just for those mobs to fall a little bit further so they fully uh, take the impact of that fall and uh, drop their biddies. Diggy dig 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 dig. It's all done. And now, thanks to Lymatica, those are all in, just like a saw. And we have a nice big a uh, hole. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty deep down there. Definitely far enough that those mobs are feeling uh, feeling the hurt as they fall down all that uh, distance there. But now, as we glide our way down. We need to figure out a way to uh, collect all their biddies once they do splat their feet on the ground here. I got some uh, pretty neat tricks to do so, involving some uh, minecarts, some lava, and some ill mango designs. So let's, uh, let's jump right into that. So to begin, we need to put down some of these redstone blocks because we're going to be powering a bunch of rails. Then we grab said rails. Then we need to make some space right here for some uh, dispensers. Now if we fill this cauldron with the spicy, spicy juice, then put a rail right down here. Put some mud on top of it. A little bit of a slab. Then a block there with a little mini block here to align the minecart just right then finish connecting up these rails right here and then give it a good old test run by uh, placing a minecart down it goes down bounces back comes up and it gets automatically collected very ingenious design by il mingo so we're just gonna wrap that around on each one of these here then we can periodically trigger and all the minecarts are going to go out in a glorious armada collecting all the items for us nice and neat 
there we have it boom bang bop ba, ba, bing all the cauldrons all the thingies in place nice and neat like a soul now we just got to work out how to activate it on and off on a little bit of a clock here so we're gonna make our way underneath the farm right here then we're gonna add some uh, observers facing into those droppers so when they observe something they will power them nice and neatly then if we add some blocks right here to place some uh, powered rails on which we can then put an observer facing into now if we put a no block right here every time we uh, boot that it gets all of them powering at the exact same time now we've put a mine card in each one of these droppers so now if I free cam when I press this uh, note block here the glory will happen here we go three two one I'll let them rip look at them go and they all turn back nice and neat back to where they were came from dropping off all the items they collect in one fell swoop let's just watch that one more time oh it's satisfying that last one is a little slower as it has to loop back around because we do have a little bit of a gap here in the middle and the reason for that is because we need to send a signal up to the farm itself from scaffolding and it's a timer good old etho hopper clock right here that we put in it's just uh, counting down a couple seconds here and it flips a little bit of a trap door situation here which then uh, sends a signal all the way up this uh, giant scaffolding tower up to the top there in which uh, once we add the water buckets will flood all the mobs all the way down to their deaths it also triggers this right here which is all the minecarts so if we just wait just a second here you'll see all the minecarts activate just like that so now we just need to put in a little bit of a magma block platform just to kill any mobs that don't die from this ridiculous fall uh it's unlikely but it is possible and it is finally time the farm is now fully functional the mob spawn like a so look at them all go around some spiders some zombies and they all get flushed down where they fall all the way and splat on the ground now the only other uh, issue uh, that we're running into now is yeah all the loot is just uh, gonna be sitting here despawning and that's uh <laughs> that's not good not good at all but look at it come in look at it come in but we've already done lots of redstone on camera today let's uh, just hop into a fast little time lapse here to get this all sorted and nice and looking beautiful let's go look at that starfish doing the redstone he's about done yep he's done and while it's not quite uh, beautiful, it is very functional here. We have our sorter in place, and look at that. We're even using the crafter. That's right. We're taking those bones, crunching them down into bone meal, then crunching them back up into bone blocks. And look, we already have some flowing in here, a little bit of string there, and some gunpowder there. And, well, anything else is getting uh, burned. That includes the very important useless rotten flesh but i do really want to make this whole thing down here some sort of building down in the yin district as you can see that's actually kind of where we're at right in the yin here but unfortunately i do not have time for that today but the farm is fully functional and so i see a project in our near future here so stay tuned to the channel to see what this truly becomes but thank you so very very much for watching this video and if you made it all the way to the end here you are a legend indeed i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day night time zone whatever it is for you this has been the starfish 5 legend signing off